good morning. I am in a really good mood because I have slept so good the last two nights. Akil and I have slept in the van. And you want to get up too? Come in. I'm going to warm this place up though now. Today is a Q&A, but more of like a juicy Q&A. I've decided to answer the questions that I always skip. <laughs> so yesterday over on Instagram, shameless little plug for Instagram. Instagram is very different than YouTube in the way that I share something, you know, about every day I answer questions or share snippets of what we're doing. It's also where I take pretty much all the questions that I answer when I do Q and A's. So yesterday I threw up a question box on Instagram and I said, all right, what do you really want to know? That's what, that's what I'm answering today. I will say one of the nice things about needing to wait for a wood stove to heat up and then your water to boil for coffee is that it does always remind me to drink my greens because I have that little lag time, which of course brings me to my sponsor for today's video. I want to give a huge thank you to Athletic Greens for helping fund these videos that get to you every Sunday. Another positive of it just being cold out here and needing to wait for water to warm up is that all of our other water is very, very cold. And I think that this nutrition drink tastes the best in super cold water. I look forward to it every morning. It's like a little treat before I warm up with my coffee. I have been drinking AG1 for almost two years now. And one of the main reasons why it has been easily incorporated in my morning routine is because of how simple it is. One scoop, one minute, once a day, that's it. Obviously, I live in a small space, so the fact that AG1 is really nine health products in one helps me keep the clutter in my cabinets in check while still providing me with vitamins and minerals, probiotics, antioxidants, and much more. Also, if you are unfamiliar with what Chris and I are doing up here, we're not allowing ourselves to go to the grocery store. So we have prepared, canned, preserved, pickled, a bunch of different food so that we could have a variety of foods and have nutritionally dense foods. But relying on Athletic Greens every morning definitely fills the gaps in our nutritional diet, especially while being up here with limited resources for food. If you are interested in supporting your health or possibly adding something to your morning routine like I have, make sure to click the link below to get a one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D3 K2 and five travel packets for free with your purchase. I'm going to show you what those look like right now. These are the travel packets and not only are they convenient for everyday people, but especially if you enjoy going into the backcountry, these are so nice, lightweight and individual servings for each day that you're back there. I like to just slip these in my top loader in my pack and off I go. All right, head to my link below. And if you end up trying AG1, let me know. Tell me how you like it. We'll start nice and easy. A lot of people want to know how often we shower out here. I actually shower more often out here than when I'm on the road like normal in the van. So Chris is like an everyday shower kind of guy. He has a shower in his rig so he can just like rinse his body off every night. Now though, I would say he showers about every two days-ish. I shower about every two to three days. I wash my hair about every five days. We have really nice base layers that are wool or like I'm wearing alpaca right now and those don't like get stenchy. They're great for that reason. They don't make you sink. Also, just wiping down feels really great. Whether you like baby wipes or like a washcloth or whatever, just taking some time to wipe down quickly um, that's always a good good thing to do like in between showers. It's really not as bad as you may think Here's a good one Lord of the Rings or Star Wars love them both But Lord of the Rings every single time Aragorn Was probably my first love this person wants to know. Oh my fan just started going nice. Good job eco fan this woman asks if you ever get nervous that you wouldn't have enough money. Yeah, at this point in my life, I would say no. Now, if I was trying to do something really big, like purchase 
lots of acres of land or bring a child into the world, yeah, I would have that worry. But right now in my life, when I'm taking care of my house, Aquila, me, and, you know, of course the little things that Chris and I share, no, I feel really good with where I'm at right now. And I've also worked years getting to this point. I have always felt like I would much rather have less money or less material belongings and doing something that I love and that's fulfilling and spending my time enjoying the things that I'm doing. I'd rather feel that way than make a bunch of money, have a bunch of material possessions and do something that I hate or do something soul sucking. It has never been in my interest to be super wealthy. I do want enough money to live comfortably and to have things that I need, but also to work on being content with exactly what I have and feel the abundance within, maybe, is a good way to put it. YouTube ended up taking off when I did my van build. I was in a lot of debt when I was doing my van build. Everything was going on a credit card and I just knew that I had the work ethic and the intelligence that I was gonna figure it all out and I was gonna pay everything off within a year, no matter what it took. And yeah, and I, I did, I did end up doing that with a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of effort. But now I worry much less about money and I'm really grateful that I do because I had a large chunk of my early 20s where I was in rough shape, I did struggle and it was all, it was all absolutely worth it. I would not change anything about those years of struggle when it comes to money. I would not change anything. I cannot imagine saving myself with a job that I hated or just focusing on that money by doing something that wasn't me or that like slowly killed me over the years. With um, the money right now that I have from my job, I work essentially full-time hours. It's just on my own schedule and focus on health with my money because at the end of this life what dictates our death for the most part is our body <laughs> i also do invest what i can which because i live so simply i can save and invest a decent amount of my money because i'm not buying random material things that i don't need that's where i'm at with the money thing i just rambled a whole bunch and now my water is ready for coffee so this one says, how often do you shave your legs in the Northwoods? I have shaved my legs one time while being up here. I am not really a hairy person. I am somebody that likes to shave, but I also don't care to be like shaven every single day. On top of that, like Chris does not care at all. Beauty and aging and the way that I looked used to be something that I valued a lot more because I think that's what society tells women. I mean, society tells women in so many different ways of messaging that their value comes from their beauty and from their appeal to men. And I've been really working on challenging those internal beliefs in myself for the last few years. And Chris is the kind of guy that, yes, he thinks I'm beautiful and he tells me that. And at the same time, he loves me for so much more than the way that I look. How he treats me when I am clean shaven, makeup on, hair curled, differs not at all from me looking like I do right now with clothes that I've literally worn every single day this week. Uh, I haven't shaved my legs. My hair isn't brushed. Dirt under my nails. He doesn't even care. He just loves me so deeply for, for not this meat suit that we happen to have in this life. <laughs> So when it comes to what I feel is more like superficial now for me, like shaving, I do it when I feel like it. And um, if I don't want to, I don't do it because it doesn't change anything about life. Look at this pile of toes. Oh my gosh. Are you ready? Let's do okay. it. Okay. So this is the one I chose. Mm-hmm. Is there ever a power dynamic struggle between you and Chris because you are both independent? For sure, because we're both hard-headed. <laughs> and 
Like, Lene will be doing something <laughs> to where it's obvious that it's not ideal situation. <laughs> like, no. she'll, she'll be carrying her camera and computer and also trying to hold on to Aquila. And I'm like, babe, like, here, let, let, let me take your computer. I'll take it with me. No, it's fine. -uh. That are you telling me that does not happen? Like literally, okay, this this is like not a theoretical. This is a literal thing that happened. She was carrying trash out to her mom's car, and she was also trying to hold a keel or something. I was like, hey, let me let me grab those trash bags. <laughs> and then she wouldn't let me take them, even though she was like struggling getting out there. I wasn't struggling. Yes, you were. You were trying to hold on to a keel because your mom was leaving. <laughs> So I took the trash bags and you went, you went running up to your mom like you were telling on me. <laughs> That's that, because we had no, just... No, <laughs> no. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. She, she ran up that... to her mom to tell on me <laughs> that I grabbed the trash bags there to throw is, into the car. There is not enough context for this story. Okay, that so is explain because... how that did not happen. That is because... Okay, so that did happen. But that's because I ran to tell my mom because we had just got done with the conversation in the bus. We were all hanging out, drinking coffee, laughing, talking about our stubbornness and that I feel like there are times where you're like, here, let me do this for you or here, you should have this or whatever. And I'm like, no, because I want to do it or I, <laughs> or I don't want to eat the last bite or like something. And you're like, no, I insist. You must let me do this. And I'm like, that, no. I, I, I have never and, in our relationship said, no, I insist. No, I know that, that you never. That, that <laughs> sentence has <laughs> never come out of my mouth. I'm not close. saying that that's exactly what you said, but that's like the, that's like the, the tone behind it. It's like, and no, it's, let it's me like, do this no no, no, no. and it's, i'm saying it's no. like the last piece of chocolate just just eat it just just do it you know you know you want it let me slip she just farted on me <laughs> actually that was another question somebody was like do you guys fart freely in front of each other i don't ever fart the dogs do <laughs> okay okay <laughs> where linnea just lets them rip and she like lifts up off the the couch when she does it it's like it lifts her <laughs> Through rocket propulsion. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. I just have no shame in my natural bodily functions. I feel like I started farting in front of you like very early. Yeah. And then you're just a little more shy about your farts. I don't fart. My body doesn't need to. It's the dogs. <laughs> okay, but you know one thing about that? I can't fart without you drawing attention to it. What? Like, I can't just, like, leisurely fart. It's different when you're, you're sitting like, on me and my legs vibrate. Every single time from you you're farting like, farting on me. No. Are you kidding me? <laughs> as far as, like, the depth of the power dynamic in our relationship, I, I would say that it actually doesn't exist. I think for the first time, like, I think your security in yourself creates a very like i have been with men that have a really hard time with my independence or they have a really hard time with me being like good at certain things or me wanting to do more like masculine things and i feel like that has created a weird power dynamic in the past for me but with mm. you you're like oh yeah go do your thing yeah like i love you regardless of this or like okay yeah you want to cut the wood or build this thing by yourself or you don't want help on the van right now cool whatever Love you the same. I think the only thing that resembles a power dynamic is our stubbornness. <laughs> but I don't even think it's power. I think, and it's it's not like a negative. Yeah. It, it's always things like, let me do this thing for you. Mm -hmm. It's not like, I'm right and you're wrong. It's it's not like that stubbornness. It's like, let me help you. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't need help. I don't want help. <laughs> Are you mocking me when you say that? Why did it sound like you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been waiting for a warm day. And it is 37 degrees. What the heck? This is just like the craziest weather. So, um, I'm going to trim my hair. People want to know how I make money. And I think on the surface, many of you guys know, but I'll be transparent about all the pieces of it. Blanket statement, I would say I am a YouTuber, which was never my plan. It was never my goal but it happened. This video that you're watching right now, I will make mm, maybe a few hundred dollars on it. Social media as a whole is 
and can be a lucrative way to make a living. I didn't know this when I started. I wanted to just put my build series up to see what would happen. I wanted to inspire other women to build, show people the process of an absolute novice doing her own rig, was also using it kind of as a way to get myself out there more and generate maybe some more clients because at that time I had a fitness business. I started to realize like, oh, you can make money from creating videos or from teaching people things or whatever. Like there are people on YouTube making a living off of all sorts of content along with that. And this is what I tell people if I'm having a serious conversation with them is that one of the most important things is to have multiple streams of income because making money from social media or from your creations, just like art, it varies dramatically from month to month. One of those would be Patreon. That's kind of short. Over the years, there have been more options for people to make money on social media because all of the platforms are competing with each other. So uh, there's a lot of short form stuff happening right now since the evolution of TikTok which means Facebook is monetizing their shorts, as well as YouTube will soon be monetizing their shorts, as well as Instagram is monetizing their shorts. Chris is gonna freak out. He loves my long hair. Can you match the back with this? Like, okay, I see. Thank you. You're welcome, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna cut my hair. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's what you're cutting it off in the front? <laughs> I'm just figuring it out. Cut your, all your hair off. <laughs> so anyway, there are options to monetize short form content. Basically you get paid per view, kind of. So that ebbs and flows each month along with YouTube ads. So I, I don't know, I feel like most people know this, but when you get an ad on YouTube, that creator is monetized on YouTube. I think that some people forget <laughs> that like, unless you're paying for YouTube premium, you guys are getting all of this content for absolutely free. And quite honestly, the money does not pay out the time it takes to make this content. Which brings me to the next piece, brand sponsors. You will notice like in my stuff and many others, people will be sponsored by certain brands. Now, I am very, very, very picky with the people that I work with. I want to make sure that they're gonna treat me right and compensate me fairly. I wanna make sure that they are really wonderful with communication and that they are a brand that I believe in and that I enjoy or that they're products that I actually use in real life. That is very, very, very important to me. It is better for them monetarily to pay somebody like me who is in the middle of the forest cutting their hair with kitchen scissors than putting their ad on TV where people don't really care to watch it, right? So I would say that brand sponsorships are where the majority of people's creators, whatever money comes from, and it's what allows them to continue creating. I think there are few people, unless they have big numbers on YouTube, that could survive solely on the money they get from YouTube ads. I'm cutting my hair now. See how scraggly my ends are? Just a little trim, nice. Oh, that's a lot. That's a really lot from the back. I love, love, love what I do. And now that I'm doing it, I have insane respect for all of the creators and the free content that I get to watch on YouTube. I need to add some layers. As far as what comes next after YouTube, I don't, I don't know. And one of the things that I've been considering is writing a book. I'm pretty sure this is how you put layers in your hair, right? I don't know, I guess maybe that's enough about work. It's really, I don't know, it's, it's tough. It's tough, it's just tough to talk about because I know that some people don't get it or some people think that it is something that it's not and I love it and I think that also really pisses people off that I love what I do, but I also never wanna be in a situation where I don't love what I do. That actually went pretty well. I think that's not too bad. Did the trick. Do you have any plans to get married and start a family? Will van life look different if so? Married, I hope so. Yeah, um, I feel like that, let me just make this go down a little bit. Uh, 
I hope so. We have talked about kids. I would say for kids, yes, but I think it has to be of the point to where it's been a dream of mine to be like a stay-at-home dad, so financial stuff would have to happen for for that to be achieved. To better explain that, like for, for me speaking for myself, is I've thought, I, for whatever reason, I've always had this vision in my life of uh, 20s is for traveling, like dirtbag traveling, backpacking, all that, just really getting out there and exploring the world. 30s is for figuring out business and money and 40s is for family. So when I said financially independent, like I would love to have enough money in the bank and residual money coming in to where I didn't have to work. And I've always thought it'd be cool, how cool it would be to be so financially independent that I'm able to be part of my kid's life every day mm -hmm. and how much I would enjoy that. And I think though hearing that, like that thought process is like, okay, I am more open to the idea of having kids because you want to be such a, you want to have such a like large role in their life rather than just like, yeah, I want to have a kid like in the background and still do all my same stuff and then put the brunt of the work on me. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've talked about it to where I don't want to have kids if I can't be a big part of their life. Right. I just think that this is, this would be really cool. Like if that is a decision, it would very much be like a team effort. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be my kids that you watch every now and then <laughs> right which is the case in some in some households you know so yeah that's that and as far as the travel aspect i think both of us would be very open to having them on the road oh absolutely i think it'd be amazing to have kids on the road mm -hmm. all the things they would experience and learn the different people that they could meet the different cultures that they could see big world view kind of thing for us for a child like that's cool Learn about Zion and going to Zion the next day. I think that there's fear of like my body changing and not being able to do the things that I love doing for a period of time. Fear of like the actual process of it all. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. <laughs> if it does happen, it won't happen soon. <laughs> like ba basically we, we had a conversation and it was to the point to where like Hey, let's like this conversation's going nowhere because we're talking about a theoretical future that's not here. And the theoretical future is still three to four, maybe even five years away. Why are we talking about it? Like, let's get to this particular stage and then we can have the conversation and see where we're at with it in both of our lives. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting ready to turn 31 and we have plenty of time. <laughs> we do. Some people are so shocked that. I'm turning 31. I, know. I I am too. Yeah. You're really getting up there. I know. <laughs> Ongoing conversation for sure. As it, I think it should be. Yeah, I think so too. One of the things that I was hoping to do often while being up here, Akila, don't take my branch, is to work on making like a set of spoons. Akila, stop. Stop. Akila, drop the branch. There are so many questions about like feminine hygiene, what you do when you're in your period, intimacy, all that kind of stuff. And I almost want to save that for its own very specific video. Like I want to grab one of my girlfriends on the road and just sit down and have like a really candid open conversation about all that stuff. Because then all of the women that want to tune into that can do so and the people that don't want to then cannot watch that video. Just know that um, there are many ways to keep yourself clean while living on the road, camping, um, whatever it may be. There are many different options to use when you have your period. Um, nothing has to change with intimacy with your partner. Um, there's just many different options to like staying fresh and feeling good about yourself and you can do that without having a full shower with running water all the time. Do you truly enjoy this more than living in a house? Um, yes, I do. I, I wouldn't be living this way if I didn't truly enjoy it more. I've lived in a house my whole life. It's not like I don't know what that is like or I don't know what I'm missing. I grew up in a house. I lived in a house in college. Then I lived in a house with my brother and then I lived in a house with my partner. 
I've been living in a house for 27 years. Living in a van and living simply provides me with an intense amount of gratitude for the things that I get to do. It fulfills um, this like want for struggling a little bit more for for the things that I would normally just have. I, I truly don't mind the stresses of it. I don't mind looking for a place to park and feeling maybe anxious if I can't find one. I don't mind going to get water every week. I don't mind having a small space or getting things dirty. Those things just don't bother me. It feels like a step up from camping. And because I've spent so much time camping, I'm like, whoa, I, this is like luxury. This is amazing. Does that mean that a house won't be something in the future? No, I have no idea what the future holds. That doesn't mean that other people should feel bad about living in a house. It's just the beauty of the freedom we have to choose different lifestyles. So much of us know this Western world where people have houses and children, tap water, electricity. They have the same home decor and expectations for society. But outside of this world that so much of us are only honed into and only tuned into, there are millions of people living many, many, many different ways. I am really going off on tangents today. That's what happens when you put a craft in my hand. I could just talk and talk and talk, but this spoon is looking really good. I'm gonna start the bowl soon. Are you disgusted with civilization? Is that why you do this? What an interesting question. No, I'm not disgusted with civilization. I think there are parts of it that I don't necessarily like, or trends maybe, that I don't necessarily want to blindly fall into. Let's go get some water, guys. The other day, Chris was filming up here, so I didn't want to bring the sled up with water, so I just left a bluey down by the river. So I'm gonna go grab that bluey and fill up our other one while I'm at it. The reason that we're doing this, or the reason that I live the way that I do, it's not because I'm disgusted with civilization. I think that I strive to not be sucked in to a life that I don't actually want. And I think that society or our civilization or the technology or the obsession with material belongings um, is a slippery slope in some ways. I think that there are incredible positives though to technology and medical care and opportunity for people, jobs. Like there's so many positives and that's why I don't want to say like a blanket statement of like civilization is bad and it's why I want to stay away from people. No, no, no. Here's my little sled. So when I was working out in the desert, I had a job where I was in the backcountry for eight days at a time. And then I was, you know, in normal life or front country, whatever you want to call it, for six days. So eight days, six days, eight days, six days. I just remember distinct moments where I would be like looking out over this like desert ridge or watching the sunset or even watching the sun rise. I just remember feeling this sense wash over me of like, this is real life. And I think that started me down some heavy, heavy thinking and reevaluating of what I really wanted in life. Because I don't want to be distracted by things that I don't actually care about. And I don't want to be obsessed with what I wear or what I own. I don't know, I even just think about our food. We're so disconnected from our food. And I also want to say, like I'm not, I'm not saying that you guys are this way and I am not this way. I'm just telling you how conscious I am of it, not that I'm not a part of it. Because I am. I just don't necessarily want to be as much and that's why I think about it so much. A few years ago, I, I couldn't even think about killing an animal and eating it. But the more that that bothered me, the more I looked into it. Because if I am eating, just in general, not just eating meat, if I'm eating anything, other things are dying. It is legitimately a circle of life, as cliche as that sounds, like for us to be sitting here, living and breathing, other things are dying. And I don't want to be disconnected from that anymore. I just finished two books by Miriam Lancewood. The first one is Woman in the Wilderness and the second one is Wild at Heart. And it tells the story of her and her husband, Peter. So it's Miriam and Peter. They, they quit their jobs 
and live primitively in the New Zealand wilderness. That is the basis of the story. There's a lot more that goes into it, of course. She does a really beautiful job of explaining her own process of moving through and navigating the civilization that we know and what we have created to be success and thriving and cities and all that stuff. And then what her and Peter have found to be their own type of peace and success in their own experiences in nature. Anyway, I, I, I actually, now that I'm sitting here filling up this water, I don't know if I actually answered the question. No, I'm not disgusted in civilization, but I'm continuously trying to challenge myself to live a life on my terms and do so in a way that is more connected to what I feel is the real world versus what the outside people are telling me I should do, listen to, subscribe to, whatever it may be. Anyway, those are my thoughts. <laughs> so it's getting dark and you might be wondering why I'm sitting here with my sled next to me. And that's because I have always wanted to sled down this hill and um, today's gonna be the day because it's slick and it's really warm. I just, I don't wanna break the sled. My goal is to bail before I break the sled. This is an interesting one. What did you struggle with most when you were younger? Much love. Um, when I was younger, I struggled a lot with anybody being unhappy with me or um, getting in trouble. One of the things that I wish I could do is go back in time and have the attitude that I have now where I just <laughs> did whatever I wanted. I wish I got in trouble in school. I I don't know where it comes from and, I, and I've, I remember talking to my dad about it years and years ago. And um, he encouraged me a lot to just like be me and not worry about getting in trouble and not worrying about what people thought, you know, messing up. That was a big thing for me in sports. I didn't want to mess up. I worked so freaking hard so that I didn't mess up. And now I'm at the point where my perspective has shifted a little bit because I realize how little it matters and how valuable it is to mess up and to fail and to make a fool of yourself. I do still think that that creeps in, especially with hate comments. There have been, you know, a few hate comments here or there that have really gotten to me and it's that similar feeling of like being a young child and, and, and getting really upset if something happened that was negative or if I thought that I upset a teacher or my parents and I was never yelled at as a kid. I was, I, I don't even remember if I was ever scolded. Like, I, I, I maybe was in a timeout one time, I don't know. <laughs> it was not the fault of my parents or my family in any way. I don't know, we talk about that inner child and I think that inner child still gets really hurt when, when people comment really nasty things on social media or when they make assumptions of, of what I'm doing or why I'm living this way or whatever it may be. Because that feeling of being misunderstood was so hard for me when I was young. And I think it's still hard for me. I care a lot less now. I really do. I know at the end of the day, people's opinions don't change who I am. It doesn't change the way that the people closest to me feel about me. It doesn't change the depth and, and sincerity of my character. I know that, logically. And um, yeah, it's still, you know, logic and, and heart, they don't always, they don't always match. So I would say that's what I struggled with the most when I was a kid. <laughs> I'm gonna try to sled down this hill now. Talking about being a kid, I better leave my phone up here. Aquila's gonna chase me, I guarantee it. I don't know if it was bright enough for you to see that, but I <laughs> ran right into the tree. Would you get another dog, or are you a one dog mama? That's a great question. Speaking of Dog. Aquila, is Aquila in there with you, babe? Yeah. Okay. No, I I would not get another dog, and there are a few reasons for that. I think number one, like practicality. Living in a van with a dog the size of Aquila, that's pretty much all the space we have. But Aquila and I have such a beautiful system. She knows the van. She loves the van. It's very much her home, and. I don't know that all dogs would be like that. I don't know what it would be like to bring another dog into that space. And it, I think it would be a lot. Other than just the practicality of two dogs, she requires a lot of love and a lot of attention 
she requires a lot of time and energy and I don't want that to be taken away from her. You know, we have this whole life to have many dogs or just a part of our life is spent with that dog, but their entire life is spent with us. Like we are their entire life. There was another question that asked if I'm gonna get a dog right away when Akilah passes or towards the end of her life and I don't even think I can do that. I've thought about what I would want to do if I would want to get a puppy before she passes, but ultimately I don't, I don't wanna put her through that stress and I want our relationship, just me and Akilah, that tight knit, strong bond, I want that to be the focus for her entire life. I've, I've, I've never had a connection with an animal like I have with Akila. She is the most unique dog with the biggest personality, the most loving kind eyes, like she's hilarious and her little quirks crack me up. They bring me so much joy. Like I don't know what I'm gonna do when she's gone and I don't, I don't wanna think about it. I don't want to replace her necessarily. Um, she's just, I don't know if she's too special for that. She's too special to think about that. This will probably fit in my thing. But overall, I'm more of a one person, one person dog mama. A one person dog mama? That doesn't make any sense. A one dog, a single dog dog mama. I am more of a single dog mama. Gosh, that's what I meant to say the whole time. What's the question? Um, the question is, Will you open these jars? <laughs> like first time I talked on your channel really was when we were doing these apples. Oh yeah. Aw, full circle. Mm -hmm. Is it ever hard to be confined in the woods with your partner? I don't think so. Babe, you're eating all the good stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> you said I'm just kidding? I'm watching you. <laughs> I, said, I said I'm getting just a little bit. <laughs> in the beginning we talked about having like three hours apart because we would need it, and I think that has not been the reality. I think the only time that we're ever really apart, like, okay, perfect example, last night, Linnea's been having a hard time sleeping in here, so she slept in the van again. Even before she went to bed, I came over there and what, I was over there about half an hour, an hour. Yeah. Just laying next to you in bed while you were reading a new book. Because sometimes she'll read out loud before we had planned on just having two or three hours a day, just, She's in her van, I'm in my bus, just because we assumed we'd be sick of each other. So far that hasn't happened. We're about halfway through, I guess, and I don't foresee it happening, so that's my answer. Yeah, I don't think it's really difficult. We're also very content, um, like, being in the same space, but not needing so to, like, interact. Yeah. Like, we'll sometimes just work for hours next to each other, and rarely... I'm just checking it. So good. I know. We have a great balance of like having really intentional quality time where we don't have our phones or our computers or we're just like just with each other. I don't think it's hard at all. I think we're mm -hmm. both very mindful of each other. Yeah. And I think that like that plays out throughout the the day and vice versa too. Yeah. Like being very in tune with each other. Mm -hmm. And then being willing to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now make my pies. <laughs> <laughs> you better, you better watch. Noodles, can of soup, and I threw in an old red pepper <laughs> that just needed to be cooked. We're all cozied in here by the fire, and I thought that I would answer the last question before saying goodbye. Are you religious? If not, what kind of beliefs do you live by? Love your videos. I would not claim that I am religious. I am very, very at peace with simply not knowing. I think that um, we're kind of encouraged to come up with a set of beliefs in that realm, but even when I was very young and we did grow up going to church and then my parents kind of allowed us to choose whether we wanted to continue going to church and they very much encouraged us to figure out what we believed as an individual. They didn't want to force us into a specific belief which I appreciate so much of all my parents. Through a lot of travel, a lot of time in nature, a lot of open conversations with other people, taking classes on religion. In college, one of my favorite classes was religion studies, basically. I think that it is fascinating. I am open to hearing what anybody believes. I just simply can't imagine that with all of the religions out there, all of the beautiful beliefs 
and the ways of thinking about creation and energy and the world that there is one to rule them all, I guess. I think there's bits of truth in all of them. We've been here for like a sliver, not even a sliver, a fraction of a sliver of time. So how could we possibly have the knowledge and power to know anything, really? And I also think that the word God means so many different things in many different languages. And I think that's really powerful too. Yeah, I have, I, I'm the kind of person that I can sit down with somebody for hours and talk about all the different beliefs and, and what could be or what couldn't be or maybe what feels right or what doesn't feel right, um, the ins and outs of it, but I, I'm not, I don't subscribe to one thing, I guess. And I like it that way. It feels good to me, so. That is, um, that's my thought on that. Well, everybody, there were a lot of questions answered. I know that I didn't get to all of them because there were literally hundreds. <laughs> and maybe in a year or so, I'll do another one of these and we'll see how these answers have changed. Thank you all for watching and coming along with us on this crazy journey of figuring out life and being open about it. <laughs> and I am going to enjoy my little wood stove. I'm gonna cut up in bed and I'm going to knock out some editing. So with that, Keel and I will see you next week. It's cold in here. Good job, little fire. It's always the tricky part. Do you think I'm being kind of funny? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> are you nibbling? Really nice base layers that are made of wood or, I mean. <laughs> it's more of you just farted on me. I'm done with your question. No, 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 babe. This no, is not that's, fair. That's it. No, this that's is not it. I didn't know it was going to be loud. You got you to gotta leave it in there. Babe, I have more to say. Whoops. I just cut my hair shorter than what I wanted to. Classic. The first one is woman in the wilderness and the sex... Go. Oh. No. This really is, is actually pretty good. Look at that. Your hair? Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I did pretty darn good. <clears throat> I'm. I gotta pick up my phone. I can't pet you with both hands. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun.